Carl. Welcome. Mark Eames. Carl congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we're, we're talking about your, your show. Uh, we can call it a, a heritage show. We can call it a legacy show, a retrospective, or just what's been up for the last 35 years with Mark Eames. Right. You know, originally they asked me, is it a retrospective? Hmm. And I said, no, that's too grandiose. <laughs> you know, plus I got more work to do. That's good. That's so, good. So, you know, although in New York you can be 35 with a retrospective. I think you can be 25. <laughs> Last school year I had one of my Yeah. So, no, I called it a survey because that's what it is, just surveying the work. And, you know, even though I've been at this for 50 years right out of high school, um, my original vision was too grandiose as well. I thought I was going to have figurative work, botanical studies, you know, a lot of going all the way back to undergraduate mm -hmm. work. But when I uh, picked Catherine Weller Renfro mm -hmm. to be my co-curator, she uh, was super helpful. She came up here, looked at all the work I had. She helped you kind of rein it in a little. She was the co-curator. Absolutely. She says, "No, let's let's not do that. Let's make this show more spare. Let's uh, not have figurative work, even though that's a big part of what you do. Let's." Start with your large charcoal drawing at your uh, Mills College graduate work in the mm -hmm. mid-80s, and we'll go forward from there. That's the, it, that's the uh, large kind of geometric? That's the large kind of geometric charcoal drawing. Yeah, and that was, that was a big help with, with Catherine. And we worked together. We've, we've curated a bunch of shows in the past, so I knew she was going to be great to work with. So, yeah, from 80, so, so just to answer your question briefly, a little more. Uh, so, starting from the mid-80s. There is work in the 90s, Carl, that was really more about me trying to figure out after Mills, after the graduate work, what am I going to do? I used to be a gardener for years. Mm -hmm. So I went right to nature's forms, botanical studies. And then it became about seeds and seed pods and vessels, metaphorical, you know, for basically life death. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at people uh, like Terry Winters and others who were really a strong influence at that time. And so that lasted for a good 10, 15 years. So that's what we attempted to do, is to show the different um, phases okay. of the development of the work um, from mid-80s to now. So it's, it goes thematically, but also it, go, it goes in terms of time. I just wonder, kind of a, 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 in an overall sense, how important is uh, the survey for you? Well, um, about a year ago is when I was celebrating my 50th year, and so I told Celeste, hey, I would love to have a show. And Arts Celeste uh, Schmelin. Celeste Schmelin is the director of Arts Benicia. I approached her. I said, I would love to have a survey, and you're, I love the space down there. It's a great, spacious gallery. And it seemed like the perfect venue, because I've been here for 25 years, half of that 50. So she said, sure, let's, let's put it uh, to the exhibition committee. They mm -hmm. said yes. Mm -hmm. And Carl, it gave me a chance to look over a lot of work, see where I've come from and where I'm going. How was that emotionally? Um, <laughs> a range of emotions, mm -hmm. excitement, a little bit of dread, a little bit of nervousness, a little bit of, oh my God, I've got so much stuff, what am I going to do? So that's when I grabbed Catherine and said, I need good some help here. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. She had a, an objective eye to it. I had a good sense, Carl, what the bones of the show should look like. Had a really good sense, but she helped me really pare it down, which was the toughest part. Um, letting go, I had to let go. So you know, as an artist, you know about letting go. Yeah. You get something you fall in love with. It doesn't work. You got to change it. How important is that sense of uh, kind of to paraphrase you, yep. uh, non-attachment, be it in the the actual uh, uh, process of uh, uh, developing work, the physicality of making work. The, uh, with luck, exhibiting the work, letting it go out, find its own space in the world. Yeah. And then the next phase, which is uh, uh, it being collected and uh, given uh, the, the, under the uh, uh, sponsorship, if you will, or the care of, of another. What's, and those, these are different kinds of letting go. Letting go, right. Yeah. I think it's everything, Carl. Mm -hmm. I think letting go is everything. Mm -hmm. That's how, at least speaking for myself, I make it through a painting. You know, I make my moves in the beginning, some moves are better than others, you know, and then at some point the piece starts to come together, you fall in love with a section of it, that's, we all know about the precious areas, 
sometimes they stay, but if we can let them go, if they need to go, let go, we let go. And then we paint over it or change it. And then, as you say, once the piece is done, we can fall in love with the piece. Uh, and then letting that go uh, uh, is part of it. So, and then I think just, you know, I've been a practicing Buddhist for what that's worth for uh, some 30 some years. So it's all about letting go. It's all about not hanging on like this. Because uh, we all know how difficult that can be. Do you find yourself uh, having to uh, readdress the letting go? In other words, it's not, it's not a destination. It's, it's, it's a, a journey to, uh, that has to be continuously uh, redredged up or readdressed or a, a recommitment to this. Yeah, and, and I was talking with someone Carl at the show. They were asking me about a piece, one of the paintings. And I had to um, explain to them that underneath what they're seeing on the surface of that painting are many layers of activity, decision-making, things come, things go, there's adding and lots of subtracting. And if you were to x-ray any one of these pieces, you would see a long journey and process to get there. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. They see the surface, they feel like the, that mark is the first mark and the last mark. And as you well know, that's not the case oftentimes. There's layers of activity. And that, that's the part of kind of deciding um, as you said, it's the journey, deciding where this thing's going to take me. I take it for a ride at the beginning, and then it takes me for a ride. Right. Right. And where I think I'm going is seldom where I end up. It's always a left turn, a right turn, a detour, a roadblock. It's whatever. that dialogue with the materials, with the surface, with yourself. Yeah, with yourself. Walking Take away care. from it and you know reinventing yourself, or you found find yourself having reinvented yourself and. You know, what is this thing that I'm responsible for that's in front of me? What do I do now? Yeah. yeah. And I've been asked, you know, do you plan these things out? And I say, absolutely not. Uh, one of my favorite quotes from another from an author is that, uh, I forget her name, doesn't matter. She said that she viewed uh, writing as an act of discovery. Yeah. Well, I think all the creative arts are an act of discovery. And if it's not, then it becomes formulaic, which yeah. is, I think, the, the death knell. Yeah. of what we do you know when it's just a formula and you just kind of repeat that formula and that's that's easy to fall into if you find a formula a strategy that works each and every time and there are artists who do that right. some very successfully yes um i've never been interested in that yeah i'm, I'm interested in the problem solving yeah I'm that keeps you interested and excited yeah I'd imagine. absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah i want to solve the problem Let's go back to uh, uh, the uh, the viewer's uh, perspective uh, on the work to the extent uh, that you uh, can uh, survey it or you know look at it yeah. uh, or articulate it. Uh, you've already talked about some of the responses to the pieces, etc. I've, yeah. I've heard some very good things about the work. Uh, I've uh, seen some nice imagery online as well. Uh, uh, I'm wondering. In an ideal world, uh, what would you have a viewer walk away with? Um, you know, at the, at the opening, I was asked to say a few words. Uh, and I didn't go into it with great detail, Carl, but Agnes Martin said, the painter Agnes Martin said, that once the work leaves the studio, I'm paraphrasing, uh, the responsibility of the art is no longer with the artist. Mm -hmm. The responsibility now is with the viewer uh, to bring his or her own sense of, uh, she calls it perfection and inspiration to the piece. But here's the thing, here's the deal. The average time a person spends, now this is museum goers or garbage, the average time a viewer spends in front of a piece of art is three to four seconds. This has been documented. Yeah. <laughs> and then they'll go look at the label or maybe the price and they move on. That is the average experience of the average so-called viewer yeah. of art, which is, as we know, a joke. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so to spend time with a piece, because art requires the long look, that's Robert Hughes talking. Art requires the long look, and as you know, uh, I think it's every artist's desire. Sales are great, love the sales, why? But when an artist, let's say in, in this case, in an opening, or even in the, the gallery when there's just a few people, sees another person, anyone, spending time in front of the piece, that means they are having 
a connection with the piece, that they're resonating on some level, that the piece touches them somehow, that's, that's the golden ticket right there. And then, of course, if someone decides to purchase the piece and take it home, then they live with it yes. daily. And when I've had people come up to me, every once in a while I'll say, you know, I still love looking at your piece in my hallway or wherever they put it. You know, that's, right. that's, that's the gratification right there. Talk about the show, the title. Uh, talk about its run at Arts Venetia. So, yeah, the show's been up a week. And it'll be up for three more weeks until October 24th is the last day, so three more weeks. Uh, Arts Benicia is open Friday through Sunday, 1 to 5, or by appointment, so they can get a hold of them. And I can let them in. Uh, the title is Shifting Sands. Uh, the reason I chose that is because all of life is shifting sands. It's always shifting. It's always changing. It just seemed appropriate. I've used that phrase now and then about all kinds of reasons. It's just shifting sands. Yeah. I mean, nothing, nothing stays here. It's always shifting. So it seemed appropriate for